Hey everyone, Brian Beeler and Kevin O'Brien coming to you from the Storage View Lab. And today we're working with a series of SSDs from SK Hynix. Now what's exciting about these is that these are enterprise SSDs and they're PCIe Gen 4. Yeah. And what that gives you is what in terms of performance? Uh, PCI Gen 3 would be limited to around just over 3 gigs a second on the read side and maybe topping out around 800,000 IOPS uh, for 4K random read. These guys get up to around 6 gig a second or above and well in excess of 1 million IOPS. So well, yeah, and Gen 4 is now the leading interface on AMD-based platforms and soon to be on Intel-based platforms as well. This particular drive is the uh, 3.84 terabyte capacity of the PE8010. Yeah. And we've had uh, eight or 10 of these in the lab for the last couple of weeks. You've been messing with them and, and testing them in a variety of different ways. And we'll go over all of that today. Uh, primarily, we had a batch of, uh, of these in the Lenovo SR635. That's their 1U single proc AMD. Uh, system and you had uh, eight or ten of these in there. We actually found the balance of uh, ten drives for um, certain workloads, and it, it really depended on which workloads fully saturated the CPUs. Because in, in certain areas, these drives are powerful enough where you might not see the benefit of completely decking out the server in them. Because at a certain point, you're going to run out of CPU. Right, and that is an interesting thing because we're also excited about the cores available in the AMD-based platforms. And that's great, and all the PCIe lanes are great, but now storage has gotten really, really fast. It's a good thing and bad thing, but yeah, it's you gotta find a balance point. It was, so it's a continual trade-off, and we'll look at some of those balance points in this video where we break down uh, drive quantities, and we also actually take a look at these uh, Gen 4 drives compared to uh, Hynix's prior drive in their 6000 series, which was a Gen 3 NVMe drive. Yeah. So we're gonna look at some of those differences as well. Uh, but before we get into that all the way, let's take a look at some of the details here. And just as a reminder, this is the 8010. There's also other drives in the family, including uh, this uh, uh, long skinny fellow, the uh, EDSFF, uh, long form factor. Uh, but Hynix is really driving forward on uh, a variety of form factors and NAND densities, uh, which is really interesting. We don't need to tear into all of that today, but expect to see much, much more uh, out of these guys. Uh, as, as time rolls on. So as we take a look quickly at the high level specs of the 8010, capacities ranging from 960 up to you know, a hair less than eight terabyte. Like we said, it's a Gen 4 drive and this is the, uh, the standard two and a half inch U.2 form factor. Um, you hit the highlights on performance, but uh, what else stands out to you there? I mean, you're gonna hit uh, a lot of these uh, specs Generally, they rely on you having Gen 4 performance. You might be asking, well, these drives are becoming more commonplace. They're coming stock items even on Gen 3 servers. What's the performance differential there? Well, let's take a look at that because there is an interesting thing going on. And you've taken, you know, this is three of our, our pile of these drives. You've taken a couple and put one in a uh, PowerEdge R7, uh, R740, yeah, right? And then a uh, R. Uh, R 6525. Right, and so the 6525 is an AMD platform with the Gen 4 bays enabled now, uh, dual proc, right? Yeah. And the other one's uh, uh, the legacy or current Gen Intel, but uh, Gen 3. And so as we take a look at uh, your SSH session here, what do you have going on? So this is gonna be a uh, file workload uh, hitting one individual drive, and we have uh, our Gen 3 platform and Gen 4 platform open. Uh, so. We kick it off uh, with sequential read. And the and point here being is is we're not looking for ultimate performance, but you're wanting to illustrate the the interface benefits. Yeah, so on Gen 4, we're really close to that uh, six gig a second uh, mark. Um, and and on, six there a yeah, little bit. And on Gen 3, we're basically at 3.3 gig a second, which is gonna be your uh, top end performance per a, uh, per, an, uh, per a slot. Right, and so it from an illustration standpoint, I mean, you're roughly double in that particular workload. Yeah, and then when we uh, switched over to uh, random read, uh, and this is random 4K read, we see the other main benefit here. So on um, Gen 3, we're around uh, 830,000 IOPS uh, 4K random read, while Gen 4, we're in excess of 1 million IOPS, so just under 1.1 million IOPS for 4K random read. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that we're looking at things that are at 800 
plus thousand IOPS and saying, oh, that's not really very good anymore. Yeah, from a single <laughs> device, we, things could be better. Right. So you're you're up over, you're closing on 1.1 million IOPS on the, uh, on the single drive in the Gen 4 interface, which just goes to highlight that when you put these things together, you, you know, 8, 10, 12, 24 in a system, now you're stressing other parts of the system. Yeah, so that's where um, we have a careful balance between the um, the workloads for our um, drive counts versus SQL Server or Sysbench or file workloads because different workloads are going to use a different ratio of CPU uh, utilization. So depending on where these things are going to be going, you might not want or need as many. So there's a balance between your performance drives, main capacity drives, or things along those lines. Well, we're seeing that a lot in the systems, especially on the PowerEdge systems like Dell. They tend to have a lot of configurations with flexible NVMe bay counts, right? So they'll do four or eight or kind of 12. I think kind of offer them in chunks of four, I think. Yeah, there's, I mean, it, it depends on the vendor because some will like to show, hey, we have 24 bays of NVMe and then you open inside and there's like one PCI card slot open. Mm -hmm. And there are others where, um, you might be able to use all the slots and a trade-off between uh, bay count and slots, although right now you're not finding as much of that on the uh, newer uh, AMD platforms, but you still, you might not need to spend that much on it uh, to really get the value that you're looking from from your server platform. Well, let's get into some of the additional work we did on the Lenovo platform and set this up a little bit as we're looking at this now just to be clear this is the 8010 drive that we've got in front of us is the gen 4 drive in red and the 6011 is the gen 3 drive in gray for the synthetic workloads in that server how many drives did we run against each other uh we're using uh 10 drives versus 10 drives okay so 10 drives 3.84 terabyte in both cases yeah it was a good sweet spot for our um uh, CPU utilization. We didn't really want to top uh, top out the CPUs, and at a certain point, um, you might be able to eke out a little more performance, but it really depends on how you're configuring the drives. Okay, so what do you see here in the 4K side? So in the 4K side, the uh, legacy drive got around uh, just under six million IOPS, while the uh, P8010 got around 8.1 million IOPS. So, I mean, <laughs> it's fairly impressive when you're looking at a not just a uh, a group of enterprise drives that five years ago would never be near these uh, near this point, but we're looking at this on a single proc server. Right, and it's not like I mean, you said legacy on the sixty eleven, which is probably technically true, but it's not like it's a seven year old drive that they came yeah. out like eighteen months ago or something. So yeah, there's there's a lot of gains to be had with uh, moving to Gen four. And on the right, you're almost doubling up on IOPS. Yeah, and this uh, on the right performance. There's some improvements here with uh, Gen 4, but uh, you don't see as much of the pop as you would on the Reap uh, side because a lot of it's going to depend on how, uh, the drive architecture and how they're laid out. Okay. And this is on the uh, sequential read side, and this is, as you start moving towards the read, uh, sequential read and write workloads, you're gonna see, you can see more of an improvement, especially at the single drive level, but um, P, going from the uh, 6011 to the uh, 8010, we went from just under 27 gigs a second to uh, just under 36 gigs a second. And again, almost doubling up on writes on the uh, Yeah, the, the 8010 did really well in its write performance. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then when we switched to some of the application performance, it's noted on the chart, you drop down to two SSDs here, uh, but talk about that a little bit in terms of configuration for MySQL. Yeah, so uh, in the MySQL workload, this is one where um, on a uh, single proc system, if we could, we could run with more SSDs, but we're going to be bottlenecking the CPUs versus the uh, the storage. Right. So we we condense the storage down, and in this case, it you could almost say it better reflects how these things are being leveraged in the real world, where you might not need as many to uh, hit your uh, workload points. You might need more capacity and more more value centric capacity on there. Right. Uh, but for our uh, MySQL workloads, this is our uh, TPCC performance benchmark. We went from uh, just over 10,000 uh, 10, transactions per second on the 6011 to uh, just under 18,000 on the uh, uh, 8010, which it's dramatic improvement there. While also dropping latency. Yeah. So going from a little bit over 24 milliseconds down to uh, just above 14 milliseconds, I mean, that's a huge improvement. Okay. 
And then uh, on our uh, SQL Server workload, this is one where for SSDs uh, was a good point uh, where we had um, a good saturation point between CPU and storage. And again, this is um, some of it's Gen 4, some of it's just the improvement on the drive architecture from the prior gen to the current gen. We went from five and a quarter milliseconds to 2.5 milliseconds. So here's the thing that I think is interesting is when you look at these drives, um, the Gen 4 technology, we saw a lot of improvement in writes. We saw a lot of improvement in latency on the application side, but it's not like these are coming with a massive premium either that we saw when we looked at maybe from uh, SATA SAS up to NVMe in the first generations, it was a big jump in price. Yeah. Going to Gen 4, it's not that big of a deal. And even in some configurators on the, the major server uh, providers, it's maybe even less expensive in some cases. Yeah, I think this is going to be more similar to the generational change between like SAS 2, SAS 3, or um, the different interface differences between uh, SATA when those revs of products came out. You, There might be a performance or price differential at the uh, server level, but not really on the drive side. Yeah, so at any rate, you know, Hynix makes these in capacities, like we said, from 960 up to uh, 768. So they're hitting the primary uh, capacity uh, points. This uh, this 3.84 is going to be probably pretty much the workhorse drive, I would think. It's yeah. the most popular SKUs for these uh, four terabyte class drives. And they're going to give you all this additional performance on these next gen platforms, whether it's the current AMD offering or when Intel starts shipping. Uh, their next-gen CPUs that enable uh, the uh, the Gen 4 lanes. Just on the server configuration side, if you're going to go with one of these servers, make sure you get a couple of slots at least of this Gen 4 NVMe. Yeah, most of the vendors, uh, it's not like you're limited just to NVMe. If you want to start off using SAS in those bays, you can do that, mm -hmm. but it still gives you an opportunity to uh, move on to NVMe if you need to. Right, and we've been working with these drives. We've had 10 of them, to Kevin's point, uh, for the last couple of weeks. They've been they're reliable, they've worked with everything that we've put them in, and we're even using systems that aren't always qualified by uh, Hynix's uh, corporate uh, True. Uh, group. So anyway, SK Hynix has got a great product, and if you're working with systems that support Gen 4, definitely worth the investment to at least get a couple of these drives and uh, and see what you can do with your workloads. As we saw in our workloads, the, the uh, database, uh, transactional workloads, transactions up, latencies down, hard to argue with that. Uh, so for a, a worthy investment uh, for your, your servers. Thanks for tuning in.